Go. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Houston Astros. And now, first pitch Joel. coming your way next. Just about set to go and towing the slab from Valdez. What do you have on him, Siggy? Four pitch guy. He's got some options to work with in terms of keeping hitters off balance. So we'll see how he decides to utilize those weapons through this start here and whether or not he's able to mix them all in early or if he wants to hold something back a little bit later, maybe second, third time through the order and give them something they haven't seen. It's tough when you know a guy's got that in his back pocket. As a hitter, you really have to stay on your toes. O'Neill Cruz in now. Takes ball one off the plate. That one off the mark. And it's 2-0. Oh. No Up the middle. And a quick out number one. Here's a Pirates lineup now. They're dealing with a sinker specialist on the mound, which can be a big-time challenge when he's right and working mostly from the knees down. Well, I think the approach you take is really try to lay off of those pitches down in the zone until he gets some called strikes and then forces you to go after that pitch. Until then, make him elevated because guys that throw those sinkers, those two-seamers, Really hard for them to be effective up in the zone. Those are pitches you can hammer. But when you get a cookie, you don't want to miss it. Breaking ball inside. One ball, one strike. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Now batting key Brian Hayes. That's a strike. Going along. Hayes, a former gold glove winner, 27 years old, a former first round pick back in 2015. The pitch. Reynolds leads off first with one away. Backdoored him with the breaking ball. Just got the corner. There's nothing you can really do with that. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Really good hard bite to that breaking ball for the strikeout right there. I mean, he was able to bury it down below the zone, and that's throwing the pitch with conviction. To second, and he's out. And the inning is over. On to the bottom of the first. No score. Back here with my pal Singy and today's starter, Mitch Keller. How about a report on him, Chris? Anytime you have five pitches to work with on the mound, that repertoire can be a real weapon in terms of keeping hitters off balance, man. It's, it's one of those things that I'm going to be looking for in this one. Does he have a feel for all of those pitches, or is he just able to get one or two over in the strike zone where he wants? Now, it's tough to do to be able to command all those pitches, but if he can, he is going to be very tough for the opponent today. The wind of the pitch. Jose Altuve at the plate and takes high there. And there's a foul ball. There's a 1-1. Fastball for a strike. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it.
That'll fire up the dugout. It's 1-0. Jose Altuve packs a lot of power in his swing. The ball just explodes off his bat. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Now it's Alex Bregman. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. There's a strike, 95 of that one. Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning. That one catches the zone. That is strike two. With the big bats coming up and a home run already surrendered, he's really going to have to execute against these next couple of batters. Next offering is downstairs. In the air, fairly deep to right field. Brings it in, and there's one down. Now we check out the Astros lineup. Here's Jordan Alvarez. Fought off foul. Keller, not a big strikeout guy, but still very effective as far as starting pitchers go. One of those guys that involves the defense and really gets him involved in the action. Next pitch is outside. He moves the ball around all the quadrants of the strike zone and will add and subtract velocity. And because of that, he gets the weak contact. It's all about missing the barrel of the bat. Sawinski settles under this one. And it's caught for the out. Lefties can definitely be a little pull happy up there, especially with pitches that they see pretty well. That was a good example. He hooked an outside pitch, hit that ball in the air to right, just not with much authority. Jose Abreu in the box with two gone and takes a look at a called strike. It seems like this type of guy is kind of a dying breed nowadays. Well, exactly. When teams are looking for high velocity, high strikeout rates, a guy like this doesn't necessarily do that. So, in oh, this one high and deep, way back there. That's not coming back. Jose Abreu goes deep, and they add to their lead. It's two nothing. That's exactly the pitch he was looking for. Crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. Here's Kyle Tucker. Foul ball there. late with the swing there he's given up a couple of runs but the pitch count really not as high as you would think might be able to get through this one. this one swung on and hit well way back there and gone he sends it out of here and they add a run it's three nothing and that shot makes their grip on the lead even tighter Back-to-back -back homers, always a special feeling at the ballpark, especially if it's your team that does it and those guys get to slap hands at home plate. This is the kind of thing that can really fire up a ball club. So two away with nobody on. And next to hit for Houston, Yaner Diaz. Right through there for a strike.
Two outs, bases empty. Next pitch is outside. Out to short. And he's safe at first. Oh, that's a really tough play no matter who you are, but I think he has a chance to get him at first if he's just able to get that throw off a little quicker. It looked like he took one extra step to set himself and get a grip on the ball. So a man aboard. So next up for Houston, Chaz McCormick. That's in for a strike at 95, and it's 0-1. Diaz the runner at first with two gone on the corner for a strike and a count is 0 and 2 and at bat like this is almost over as it begins in this situation you have no idea what the next pitch is going to be you just got to hope that you can make contact And he deals. One ball, two strikes. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Back here in Houston, and now Andrew McCutcheon. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. On the ground to short, and it finds its way through for a hit. And the leadoff man aboard. That is good. The right fielder. Now it's the right fielder, Jack Sawinski. Ball one low. This might be a steal situation, but that's not your average catcher behind the dish. You have to be careful here. The pitch. Out towards right center. That's well struck. This looks like extra bases. Around third. He scores, and it's now a two-run game. And he'll make it into third with a triple. Well, that gets him a little closer in this one. Put a pretty good jolt into that one. Great swing, nice balance, and weight transfer. And he got it to drop in out there in the deep part of the field. So, man aboard, Henry Davis, the next pirate to hit. Splits the plate. It's 0 1. The Pirates trailing by two here at the top of the second. Next pitch is downstairs. Eric Summersgill, our plate umpire. One thing to watch out for, Boog, is what side of the plate Summersgill might be favoring. He usually sets up at an angle. Pitchers sometimes will try to figure that out early so they can attack that spot and get as many strike calls as possible. And another ball. That's inside. And the count is three and one. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the three one count. Runner at third here. Nobody out. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Oh. 
swing and a drive deep right field back there and it's gone so he blasts one out the other way and we are tied it's 3-3 the count was full but he was ready to swing it Anytime you have a pitch down the middle of the plate, the percentages go up for the hitter to do damage, even if it's a pretty good sinker like that one. Nice piece of hitting there at the plate. On the ground right side. He handles it himself. One out in the second. The center fielder, number 12, Michael A. Taylor. And now the center fielder, Michael A. Taylor. And first offering is fouled off. One out, base is empty. This one high in the air to left center. That's out number two. Two outs, base is empty. And stepping in is the speedy Leover Peguero. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball one. He was late there. Strike one. Tied up here in the early going. Outside low. And it's two and one. Right through there for a strike. Two down, nobody on. Fights it off, you'll see another. Two outs. This one chopped up the middle. On the run, sends it over to first. In time, got him. And that'll do it. But they strike for three in the inning. Two on this two-run home run. We're tied now with three apiece. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now the shortstop, Jeremy Pena. Keller back to work. The shortstop takes the ball. Out to short. Leadoff man retired here in the second. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground. Nice ground out. And now here's a speed threat. Outfielder Jake Myers. Bunting for a hit. And that's just foul. Here comes the 0-1. That's a little bit low. One, two now. Tapped on the ground softly to short. On the run, throw to first. Already two out here in the home half of inning number two. Jose Altuve up to hit here. He's already homered in this game. Pitch is in there. That's strike one. Not sure if he was expecting for the pitcher to come right at him, but he got a nice cookie there and just watched it the entire way. And there's a ball.
Swings and sends a rocket to right. Sawinski makes the catch inning over. Astros go down one two three. So no change in the score. It's three three. Top half of the third inning. Here's O'Neill Cruz. No oh, Boog. I know it's obvious but you just can't miss Cruz when he's on the field. I've never seen a player like him. I mean, he's six foot seven, weighs 220 pounds, and is the tallest shortstop in the history of Major League Baseball. You know, these Pirates doing a good job of putting the ball into play, and that makes things more challenging on the defensive side. And here's a stat for you, Boog. They're making contact with more than 85% of the pitches that they're swinging at. It's pretty special stuff. Not so good if you're out there on the mound. The wind of the pitch. Bows that off to the left and we'll do it again. Drilled to right way back there and that is gone. And they grab the lead. It's 4 3. He absolutely crushed that one. No doubt about that one Boog. We knew it wasn't coming back. This one absolutely screamed out of here, Singy. A laser. Statcast tells us it was 112 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah, it left in a real hurry and didn't go that far because of the launch angle being a little flatter, but clearly it had all the velocity it needed to leave the yard. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. One run across in the frame so far. We're here in the top half of inning number three. That's inside. And the count is one and one. Oh, he's just got to delete it. You give up that leadoff home run. Go back to work. Focus on this next batter. That's ripped. Base hit. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. Up next for the Pirates, Key Brian Hayes. Struck out swinging his first time. Runner takes off. That one fouled off. Reynolds aboard here at first with nobody out. Runner on the go again. Pitch in for a strike. And safe. It's a stolen base. Well, with that kind of elite arm he has behind the plate, man, it's a pretty big deal when you can swipe a bag against this dude. Maybe more than anything, it prevents teams from just testing him, thinking that they can even steal a base. But right here, they successfully move that runner up to scoring position. Good job. And the pitch. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Really nice sequence with a quick strikeout right there. A couple of breaking balls to get ahead. 0-2. Then pump the hard stuff by him for strike three. And I like that he didn't mess around. Sometimes guys, they like to get too cute. They waste a pitch here or there and then find themselves back into a hitter's count. But right there, he had him right where he wanted him and pitched him aggressively to get the strikeout. And now it's Andrew McCutcheon. And that one off the outside edge. One out and a runner at second. Next offering in there for a strike. Strike one. Throws the first in time. Jack Sawinski, the next pirate to hit. He tripled and scored his first time. Going one. 
Runner at second, two down. Outside low, ball one. That one the other way, and it stays fair. Reynolds rounds third, headed for the plate. He'll score easily, and they take a two-run lead, and that's a double. Well done, drives in the run. Recognized the break on that pitch early, and that allowed him to keep his front shoulder in. You know, it's easy to bail on those front door breaking balls, but a great job right there of letting it travel, then unloading a nice balanced swing. Here's the catcher, Henry Davis. Off the plate, and it's 1-0. Two outs and one in scoring position. To third. Into the outfield base hit. Coming home. He'll score and they're up by three. Puts a run on the board and picks up an RBI. Just found a way to slap that ball down the third baseline. That's really excellent back control. And it kind of goes back to all those drills you see hitters do off the tee where it's placed in different spots. That was just nice. Runner at first with two away. Here's Rowdy Telez. Just missed. And another ball. Go Chris through the early stages. He hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. And that's outside and that's ball three it is interesting though when you consider the way the game is run now doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens two outs hit connect on the curve ball struck him out so they get three runs on four hits one was the solo homer we move on to the bottom of inning number three. It's the Pirates six and the Astros three. And we're back. Bottom of the inning. Here's Alex Bregman. The line to kick the pitch. Well, the offense has gotten going, and a pitcher wants to go out there, have a real quick inning, get those guys back into the dugout so those bats can stay hot. The wind of the pitch. Fastball for a strike. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't. That one is absolutely belted. That's back there. Out of here. A solo shot. It's 6-4. That's their fourth home run of the game. They can't stop, and they won't stop hitting home runs in this one, Boog. They're clearly feeding off of each other at the dish. Sometimes too much velocity will cause a pitcher to throw through the sink, and that means that there's more four-seam action than there is sink, and that can turn into a really good pitch to hit. Well, we saw it right there. Didn't miss a stitch on that baseball. He's got himself a home run. And a foul ball. Right-hander kicks deals. That one to first. He steps on the bag. One gone, bottom of the third inning. The first baseman, Jose Abreu. Jose Abreu up to hit. He's already homered here in this one. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. The Pirates leading by two here in the last half of the third. 
Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. Another homer. He's done it again. His second homer of the game. It's 6-5. That's their fifth homer of the game. Man, they're all getting into the action. It's starting to feel like a home run derby up here. Kyle Tucker up next for the Astros. Fastball for a strike. 1 1. Still only one out here in the inning. Now fly ball to right center. Taylor settles underneath it. Makes the grab, two down. Now batting, catcher, Yainer. And stepping in for the Astros, Yainer Diaz. Reached on an infield single his first time. A little bit high, maybe. One and oh. Called strike right there. And the righty deals. Started to swing, held up. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. A gigantic blast. Their third home run of the inning. It's 6 6. A breaking ball on the inside part of the play requires a hitter to stay really square with his mechanics. If you fly open with the front shoulder, there's no way you keep that ball fair. An outstanding job mechanically. He deserves that home run. Two outs, nobody on. Chaz McCormick, the next to hit, went down on strikes his first time through. Outside. The 1 0. High fly ball near the pole. That one is foul. Well, that ball is hit pretty hard and sure had home run distance, but if you're the pitcher out there on the mound, you execute it. Just a long strike, you go after him and finish him off. Wings here and blasts one left field. Reaching for it. Makes the catch. Out of the fourth, here's the center fielder, Michael A. Taylor. They've been so good about responding when the other team scores, coming back in the next half inning and putting something on the board themselves. In there for a strike at the bottom of the zone. Taylor, in his ninth season, 33 years old, and he was a sixth-round draft pick back in 2009. He takes it on his own. That's the first out in the top of the fourth. Now batting the second baseman. 
Tied at six. Leover Paguero, the next pirate to hit. Right through there for a strike. Swings and blasts one deep to left center. That's back there. That's long gone. He'll touch them all. It's 7 6. That's their third home run of the game. They're having a lot of fun at the plate in this one. They've got the long ball working for them on autopilot. With this pitcher's velocity, a changeup is really a break for a hitter. He got a BP fastball, didn't move a whole lot, and he absolutely tattooed it. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Framber Valdez won't go any further, and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break. Now on the bump, Brandon Belak. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. So the Pirates batting order turns over. Now at the plate, O'Neill Cruz. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Well, here's a deal not everyone remembers. Cruz was actually signed by the Dodgers in 2015, but Los Angeles dealt him to Pittsburgh in 2017 for Tony Watson. That's a rare trade the Dodgers just might regret. And downstairs. Swings and misses. And the count one and two. Do that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. Got it by him for the K. Uh, I think he might have gotten away with one right there. That was a very hittable pitch right over the heart of the plate. And I know that batter is kicking himself right now. Would like to get that pitch again. Just pulled the string on it, and the deception gets him the K. Here's a high fly ball out to center. Has a beat on it. Squeezes it. And that is that. One in the inning for the Pirates on this solo homer. And this is now a 7-6 ball game. You're dialed into the show. Bottom four. And stepping in for the Astros, Jeremy Pena. And here it comes. Right through there for a strike. Well, these Astros putting together some really good at-bats in this game. There's been a lot to like with how they're approaching their chances at the plate. You just can't average two runs per inning without a complete team effort from the lineup. Everyone's been doing their job, setting up the next hitter and taking care of their own business at the plate. The pitch. Got him. And there's one down. And next to hit for Houston, Jake Myers. Wouldn't chase that time. The Strohs down by a run. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. And the right-hander deals. Popped up foul territory behind the plate. And there are two down. Good hard fastball up in the zone right there. They look really good coming in, but so hard to get on top of as a hitter. So the batting order turns over. Here's the former MVP, Jose Altuve. Singing, he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? 
Well, just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. The 0-2. Caught him looking for the K. One, two, three, go the Astros. They're right in it, though. It's 7 6. Back here at Minute Maid Park. Top five, John Shambi with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Key Brian Hayes. Belak back to work. That one hit to right. Tucker makes the grab. One away. Here's Andrew McCutcheon to hit. One for two. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. And first offering is fouled off. Boog, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. One down, base is empty. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Gosh, here it is. Hit it. Three-pitch strikeout, all fastballs. Man, he's got a lot of confidence in that pitch right now. So two down now, and here is Jack Sawinski. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Rip towards third. Bregman to first, and that will end the inning. Bucks go down quietly. They'll try and hold on to their 7-6 lead. And welcome back to the ballpark. We head to the bottom of the fifth, and now it's Alex Bregman and a pitch. In the air, out towards right center. Taylor on the move. He's got it. And there's one down. Woo! He was all over that first pitch fastball. Just barely missed it. Man, this guy was ready to hit. Now it's Jordan Alvarez. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. Ripped on a line. And yeah, they get the out on Alvarez. Two down. Not fooled at all right there. He was clearly all over it, but sometimes you hit it too hard and right at someone. You're looking for one of those bloop hits to get a knock sometimes. So here's the Astros cleanup hitter, Jose Abreu. Right through there for a strike. The Astros trailing by a run. Last half of inning number five. And that's off the inside edge. One and one. Two down, nobody on. And there's a breaking ball that drops in there. Two balls, two strikes to count with two outs. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand. Got him looking. And it's a three up, three down inning. Nothing doing there for Houston. Down a run and a tight one. It's 7 6. All set for the top of the sixth. And here's the catcher, Henry Davis. The pitch. And that one clips the corner. You know, these Pirates, digging into their numbers, have to be happy with the swings they're taking. They have five extra base hits on the stat sheet so far, and that tells me they're seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well.
With all those extra base hits, it's easy to think we're going to see that trend continue the rest of the game. They seem to be really locked in at the plate. And a swing and a miss. One gone here. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. And now it's Rowdy Telez. Clobber to right field, way back, gone. He flexes his power with that swing, and they add on. It's 8 6. First pitch swinging, and he got the fastball. He knew exactly what to do with it, too. With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. Base is empty one away. At the plate for Pittsburgh, Michael A. Taylor. That one finds the zone, and that's strike one. One out, base is empty, and a run in, and we're the top half of the sixth. Misses inside, and one and one. Activity in the bullpen for Houston. Rafael Montero, the veteran right-hander, appears to be loosening up. Martinez also throwing the one-one. That's to third. Over to Abreu. Yeah, they get the out. Two outs, bases empty. Leover Peguero digs in now. And delivers outside. Fly ball down the line. Tucker on the move. Drops into the glove. And that is that. Cannonball coming. It's now 8-6. It's Major League Baseball on the show. So digging in, Kyle Tucker. He had a big swing for these guys way back in the first inning. Yeah, Boog, he didn't waste any time in this one. The solo shot really got his team going, and he's looking for more right here. And a pitch. And ball one. Double barreled action in the bullpen. Carmen Majinski loosening up in case he's called upon by Derek Shelton. Hernandez, the lefty, warming up as well. And the 1 0. Strike one. Swing and a miss. This guy's got such a good sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. And that one missing low. Talk about the right guy at the right spot. They really need a rally, and this guy is someone you can believe in to find a way to get on base. Foul ball, another 2-2 upcoming. Here comes a pitch. Still 2-2 two and two after the foul ball. And that one is inside. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Kicks and deals. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Kicks and fires. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch.
That's ripped, and this one could be extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. In safely, it's a double at his second hit. But when you see that many pitches in it at bat, your chances of succeeding go up, and right there we see the result. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Mitch Keller done for the night, and as he heads off, we'll step aside for a minute. Back with a new pitcher after this break. On the mound now for the Pirates, Roansi Contreras. Still a lot of game left, and this game could go either way, so... This is a big opportunity for him to get some important outs and try to help carry this lead into the later innings. And now, Yaner Diaz. And it gets by him. Tucker headed for the plate. Throws to second. Not in time. He's safe. And a run comes in to score. Well, all you can say is he just whiffed on that ground ball and probably took his eye off it a little early and looking to pick up his throwing target, but that's not something you'll see professional infielders do too often. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Here's the left fielder, Chaz McCormick. In the dirt, and that is ball one. Righty delivers. That one not close. And yeah, that's ball two. Not showing great command so far in this at bat. 2 0 count. He's got to execute here, or this could get ugly. In the air, right field. It gets down a base hit. Coming home. He scores to tie it up. It's eight apiece. No outs, runner at first. Jeremy Pena up next for the Astros. Ball one, no strikes. Fastball for a strike. And a pitch. And that's in the dirt. Two and one. The pitch. Too low, and it's ball three. Jake Myers waiting to hit for Houston. With the go-ahead run at first here in the bottom of the sixth. Check swing. Now we'll look down to first. And yes, he did. He went around. Line drive. That's a fair ball inside third. Lead runner makes the turn at second. Row comes in. Runner stops. Second and third. Nobody out. That's a great job of hitting, but I'm a little disappointed that the runner wasn't going on the pitch. If he's going, Boob, he scores and they take the lead. So next up for Houston, Jake Myers. Golden opportunity right here. In there and it's 0-1. Oh the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Aguero. Off balance throw in time. But the go ahead run comes in to score. 
Well, you're definitely looking to do more with that opportunity at the plate. Two runners in scoring position, but at least he puts the ball in play. They bring across one run. Still one out there to pick up. Back to the top of the lineup. Standing in is the power hitting second baseman, Jose Altuve. If you're trying to keep the line moving, this is the guy you want at the plate. Such a good hitter. Can also flash some power. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Wow, no fair right there. I mean, that slider didn't move to the very last moment. Incredibly difficult to pick that up. Just kind of have to tip your cap on that pitch. Pena stands at third with one gone of the inning. That one misses. And now three and one. Good purpose pitch right there. Trying to tease him, get him to raise his sights, pop something up, and make it an easy out. Righty to the plate. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. At the belt and fires. And yeah, there's ball four. Third baseman number two. Allen. And stepping in for the Astros, Alex Bregman. One for three. Turned on, but foul wide of third. And a pitch. Ball one there. First and third, one down. Good eye in that spot. Tough spot right here, a couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. Two on, one out. Well, in this situation with a runner on first, less than two outs, some say, hey, get the ground ball double play with two strikes. Some people say get the strikeout. I think you just execute your pitch, make the best pitch you possibly can, and let the result be whatever it's going to be. Got him swinging. Now two out. Well, one of the things that hitters will do is they'll look for that red dot on the baseball that's is coming in to let them know what the pitch is. And if they see the red dot, it's typically a slider. But when a guy's got a really tight one with high spin rates, very difficult to determine. And that's probably why we saw a swing and miss right there. Just a nasty pitch. Alvarez in the box now. Take strike one. That one missing inside. Runners on first and third, two away. Base hit into the outfield. In comes the runner from third. It's 10 to 8. Well, there you go. The RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring it back. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume. Carmen Majinski on a pitch out of the pen here. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. Now back. Next to hit, Jose Abreu. And the way he's going in this one, we've been waiting for his spot to come around again. All right, listen, everyone, stop what you're doing right now. This guy's got two home runs already. Now he's going for number three. That one finds the zone. It's 0-1. Yeah, that's outside.
Ball to strike. The pitch. Now he breaks his bat. Takes it himself. Inning ends, and that stops the bleeding. Nine men come to the plate for score. Seventh inning coming up. It's the Astros 10 and the Pirates 8. Back here in Houston, digging in, O'Neill Cruz. It's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. This is a very important inning here. After scoring all those runs, you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down. The offense has worked hard. It's shut down inning time. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. Left hand batter waits. Oh that got away from him. And he's going to reach on a hit by pitch to lead off the inning. Fell in the box. He's seen that movie before. It wasn't a good movie either. He knew how it was going to end right from the beginning. Now these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But you know at the very least if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. And that misses off the outside edge. He might want to steal second in this spot but he's dealing with a catcher that has one of the best pop times in the game. He needs to pick his spot very wisely. The tying run at the plate. Finds its way through base hit. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle. Allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer. And he hit the ball on the screws. So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Key Brian Hayes. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Just missed. Swings through that one. Well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit, but when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. That one just misses. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. With the go-ahead run at the plate, here the top half of inning number seven. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Well, he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. That was his third strikeout, and this one looking, obviously, so he's been a little overmatched. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Two on, one out. Andrew McCutcheon, the next Pirate to hit. Three pitch strikeout last time up. Got to put up more of a fight in this one. Right through there for a strike. There's a line drive to left field. Into the dive, and he got it. Runner tags at second. Cruz rounds third, headed for the plate. The relay, and he's out. Cut down, and that ends the inning. Always exciting to see a play at the plate. Trying to score with two outs, but the tag just gets him in time, and they cut down the run to end the inning. And we're back bottom of the seventh now it's going to be Kyle Tucker if you don't get ahead in the count 
you can forget about having any success against him. And here it comes. And a foul ball. Majinski measures six feet two inches. He features a four seam fastball, a slurve, a changeup, and occasionally uses a cutter. And strike two. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Foul ball still a one and two count. And another ball. This guy's a fun guy to watch taking it bad. He just battles up there. He doesn't take a pitch off at all. Makes it so difficult on the pitchers out there. You can tell they get frustrated with how long it takes to put him away. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Gainer Diaz getting ready to hit. Known for his rocket arm behind the plate. And there's a ball. Base is empty one away. Here the bottom of the seventh. Fastball for a strike. Swings and misses. And the count is one and two. Well, that's that slurp right there. He threw it extremely well. And talk about just a ton of breaks. So tough to get that barrel to. Headed towards the corner, Sawinski sizes this one up, and there are two outs. As good as he's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand, you cannot hang a breaking ball right there. Lucky it stayed in the ballpark. Stepping in, Chaz McCormick. And that's outside. That one finds the zone, and it's one and one. On the ground to third, Hayes gets it to first, and that is the inning. Astros go down one, two, three. They lead it, though. It's 10-8. Here's a new pitcher from the pen, Brian Abreu. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Number 52, Brian Abreu. And here is Jack Sawinski. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Wow, good luck catching up to that one. The 0 1. On the ground to the left. And foul ball. The 0 2. That one ripped. McCormick ranging back on it. And it's off the out of town scoreboard. It's a double. Third hit of the night for him. Having himself a really nice game at the plate. Just missed out on a home run right there, but he certainly hit it hard enough. Just didn't have the right launch angle to carry it over the wall, but still an excellent swing of the bat. And now the catcher comes up to him. Henry Davis. Corner infielders guarding the lines, trying to prevent extra bases. First pitch misses. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit is probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. And that one fouled off. And he can't come up with it to first and he just gets it there in time one away that's why you hug the lines on the corners late in the ball game like this positioned perfectly and here's the first baseman Rowdy Telez
That one pulled foul. And fouled off. Tying run at the plate. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0 and 2. And he deals. With the tying run at the plate, and we're in the top of the eighth. Fights that one away, still one and two. Right-handed reliever. And a swing and a miss. Huge strikeout there. Well, Boog, I'll tell you, when he goes to look at the video of that pitch, he's going to want to punch himself. That slider had hit me written all over it, and clearly he just got a little too excited and was out in front. Tell you what, when you get a pitch like that, you cannot miss it. Those have a chance to go a long way. And now the center fielder, Michael A. Taylor. That's outside. Ball one. Two outs. Fought off foul. And a pitch. Bounce to the right. Altuve handles it. Throws the first in time. That's out number three. Pirates leave one. Can't cut in to a 10-8 deficit. Back here in Houston, bottom of the eighth. And stepping in for the Astros, Jeremy Pena. The pitch. And that one a little below the knees. Ball one. Swing and a pop-up. Foul territory for the catcher. Davis makes the catch. One down. The center fielder, number six, Jake Myers. And the batter now, Jake Myers. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. And he drops it down the third baseline. Bare hand grab, and he beats it. That's a hit. Great try there. He was racing down the line and probably didn't assume he was going to be safe until his foot hit the bag and looked up for the umpire. Nice bond and great hustle to get himself a knock. So the Houston lineup turns over. And now Jose Altuve. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Majinski picks over. In the dirt. Nice job behind the plate there. Here comes a pitch. Foul ball. And another ball. Myers over at first with one away. On the ground right side, four, six, three, double play. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Through eight full, it's the Astros 10 and the Pirates 8.
So Josh Hader gets the call to the mound. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect the tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. The pitch. Aguero leading things off and takes a strike. Into center. Myers sizing this one up and makes the grab. And there's one away. So the lineup flips over. O'Neill Cruz, the next pirate to hit. Hader, multi time all star. He features a two seam fastball, a slider, and he works in a changeup. One down, base is empty. There's a strike, 95 of that one. Part of what makes Hader's fastball so unique is that he gets carry on the fastball up in the zone, and yet he grips it like a sinker. So technically, his fastball is labeled as a sinker. And now the lefty swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. And first offering is fouled off. And Hader's been one of the best strikeout pitchers in all of baseball. And now the count is even. Just missed. They're down to their final strike. The Pirates down to their final strike. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. So he gets on base and keeps it going. That's tremendous fight from him, and I know it's got the dugout fired up down there. Down to the last strike, and he comes up with a hit to keep the game alive. It ain't over yet. Key Brian Hayes, the next Pirate to hit. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts and a flyout. Misses outside, and that's ball one. The Pirates down by a pair here at the top of the ninth. Swing and a miss. And a count even at one. Just amazing to me how many closers and back-end relievers just throw absolute gas these days. I never would have had a chance. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Not even close there. And the count is even two and two. Lifted to left, and that should do it. He pulls it down, ball game. And the Astros slug their way to a win in this one. Well, we saw both teams come ready to swing it in this one, and they found a lot of success. A couple of touchdowns up on the board today. Pretty amazing. And it turned out to be a close one, considering all the runs put up really wild. And this one ends the final 10-8. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.